Hello YouTube. Happy New Year, January 2024. And uh, coming into my fifth year of farming macadamias. I'm not at my own farm today because it's just too wet. Uh, the New Year started very wet, uh, particularly up in Rosebank. And so I'm here in the rolling hills of Tregeagle. And what a lovely sight, macadamia farms everywhere. And um, I thought I'd come down, because there's not much to do when it's raining, and see how the other half lives. Um, Alstonville and the Alstonville Plateau had less rain last calendar year than was optimal for growing macadamias. But certainly from driving around Trugeagle, Alphadale, Lindendale, so far, I haven't seen too many ill effects on the trees. Um, this particular farm that I'm viewing from the roadside has some A4s here. Uh, the leaves are light green for macadamias, but that's a normal thing. The trees are in fact quite healthy and I can see quite a lot of nuts on the actual branches. Um, those trees look like they've been quite heavily mulched with uh, wood chip, grass, that sort of thing and they're really doing quite well so um, again i can't tell you the optimum amount of rain for uh, a year when growing macadamias but um, the final figures were rosebank 1328 alstonville 1042 uh, Bundaberg got 662 and that's that's well less than what you need but maybe they're making up some of the ground with irrigation and um, Nambucca 604 although I'm not quite sure I trust that figure from the local Bureau of Meteorology station um, just up the road in Coffs Harbour they had about a thousand millimetres the same as Alstonville and um, so not entirely sure on that last figure but um, yeah look when you're only looking at about 600 millimetres you're probably going to have a fairly bad year now at the start of a year the nuts have sized up as much as they're going to and that is the structure the internals of the nut uh, are as big as they're going to get and yet the experts tell us that the rain that comes at this time of year which it does naturally in the northern rivers of new south wales is the most important time for the tree and you might be wondering well why is that if the nuts as big as it's going to be the water would all be sort of like building the tree up for next season but that's not true the water that goes into the tree at this time of year does help mature the nut um, it's called the oil accumulation phase where the nut really isn't getting bigger but the oil content is getting higher as the nut approaches harvest in you know february march um, the oil accumulation phase officially sort of ends in February in the Queensland region and um, March in northern New South Wales. And that's when the nuts start falling. The nuts aren't really good to eat when you pick them off the tree. You have to actually wait for them to drop and that's when the oil is at their best, the taste is at their best. Now of course some nuts, some nut varieties if you've watched my video some that varieties drop their crop a lot later in the year than others now does that mean that um, the later dropping nuts are better or bigger um, not necessarily does it mean that the later dropping nuts taste better than the earlier dropping nuts because they've had more time in autumn to soak up new oils and that sort of thing again not necessarily at all um, one of the best tasting nuts is the macadamia 816 which drops really quite early it usually drops about march or april in um, the northern rivers and it has lovely tasting kernels one of the worst tasting nuts or well one of the least nice tasting nuts shall we be polite is the a16 and um, its brother the a4 here they tend to drop quite late so all that extra time on the tree doesn't necessarily make for a better nut i think you know at least as far as common expertise is concerned in 2024 um, the later or early dropping qualities of a nut don't really make a hell of a lot of difference to the crop it's just the rate at which the crop seems to mature to the point where the tree decides it's time to 
cut the cord and drop the nut on the ground for for um, what it thinks will be reproducing a new macadamia tree. But let's have a look at um, an irrigated macadamia farm here on um, the Alstonville Plateau while we're here. So I'm in Rouse Mill now and the last time I had a look at this farm was back in 2022 when um, there was much more rain than anybody needed and I was doing a video on whether it was necessary to irrigate your macadamia farm. Now certainly in 2022 that was not the case um, but here at the start of 2024 well, this particular farmer who irrigates his crop, um, you know, obviously I can't say how much he's irrigated his crop, but he's probably in the box seat because with the slight lack of rain in the Alstonville Plateau, it will not have bothered him and he's got himself, uh, by the look of these trees, a absolutely beautiful crop on. And, um, just looking down the rows, you know, I, I can see probably be a bit hard to see on your screens at home But um, I would be proud to have a crop like this It's kind of similar to the crop I've got in block one of my orchard, which I've shown you a bit too much in recent videos um, But yeah, look absolutely uh, Lovely crops on these trees. No signs of water stress whatsoever and as you can see the irrigation lines run between the trees they have to go up above the ground level even though most irrigation systems would be on the ground and that's because you need access under the trees to pick up those nuts when the time comes what you can also see here is that apart from mulching the trees the farmers also herbicided uh, the grass away from the trunks to keep uh, a little alleyway of bare ground underneath each tree um, it's a somewhat controversial measure some people say it contributes to erosion and root exposure but look done properly I don't think it really hurts um, and at the end of the day we're here to pick up a crop and when it comes to grooming these rows the nuts as you can see on the branch there will fall directly down on the ground where it is easy for a harvester to pick up and really again quite a lovely crop not something that you'd want to lose this farm here is on the edge of Alstonville uh, probably still just in Rouse and um, a very nice crop on an older looking uh, Hawaiian tree um, I'd suspect these are two four sixes but it's really hard to tell but really look very well done for this crop but the start of the year is probably a better time to look at the bigger picture and that is the year that just happened and perhaps a look ahead at the year that might come to pass in 2024. Uh, 2023 is one of those less said the better years. Um, the crop wasn't all that great, particularly in the northern rivers. Um, the price was terrible. It crashed to an all-time low. Macadamia suppliers had big stockpiles of unsold macadamias from previous years and they were offering prices and conditions that weren't very attractive to growers. And um, as a result, many of the growers um, just didn't pick up their nuts at all because it was just too expensive and probably would have widened rather than cut their losses. Um, that was 2023. Um, what's going to happen in 2024 and um, I've had a chat to the people I know in the industry and got their best guess on what might happen and I'm going to give you my own best guess as well um, we're starting off with a bit of rain we look like in general um, at least in the northern rivers having an excellent harvest season um, the nuts I'm seeing are big and plentiful, follows on from a great flowering season as well. I'm not sure about how Bundaberg's going. Uh, I'd love one of my Queensland subscribers to comment and tell us what the crop's like in Bundaberg where it's been quite dry because that's actually going to have a bigger impact on the overall Australian numbers than what you see here in the Northern Rivers. But um, assuming the crop's going to be a decent size, 
What's the speculation on what we're going to be paid for it? Is macadamia farming going to be viable? Certainly in 2023, a few farmers didn't think so. Some bit the bullet and bulldozed their macadamia trees and they're probably going to be doing something else with their land. Um, plenty of farms, of course, the great majority of farms are still upright, still being invested in and, um, and this year are bearing well. Will it be worth picking up the nuts? Well, I think the answer to that is yes, because the stockpiles of nuts that were allegedly sitting in silos waiting to be used uh, have all reportedly emptied. And um, when the Australian Macadamia Society, or rather the, the um, processors, had predicted a crop of 60,000 tonnes and only got a crop of 48,000 tonnes, um, it left them a bit short on promises they were making to buyers overseas and even in the domestic market. We did hear some rumours, or well, more than rumours, of processors scrabbling around their farmers asking them if they had any more nut they could please send um, because they had run out. And what that means is that the processors will start the 2024 season with fairly empty coffers for nuts. Um, and they are going to have to attract farmers to send in their crop. That, to me, means that there will be some price competition amongst the processors, um, because processors need nut in order to make a profit. You can't sell nothing. You've got to sell an item before you can make a margin on it. And to do that, you've got to get the farmer to promise the crop to you. Um, how much of a price rise will that mean? Well, I don't know. I mean, I've mentioned in a recent video that a real estate agent is busy telling everyone that the price this year is going to be $3.80 a kilo, which would be a, an 100% rise from the last season. And look, it's, it's you could say it's as good a guess as any. I'm a little bit less optimistic than that. Um, if I had to guess right now in January 2024, I'd guess at $3.00. Um, Still a little bit less than what you need to make a profit on most farms, but some of the very larger uh, operations which are very mechanised and run in large scale would still make a profit at that. There'd be some Bundaberg farms that in a good year would definitely make a profit at $3 a kilo, uh, and those farmers at least would be prompted to send their nuts in. The other farmers, like myself, uh, I don't know whether I'd make a profit at $3 a kilo, I haven't run the numbers, but certainly uh, it's at the level where if it was going to make you a loss, sending in your nuts would possibly um, cut your losses. So um, that'd be my guess. In general terms, well, the demand for macadamias in the world is still going up. The supply for macadamias in the world is still going up and we're breaking into new markets hopefully like India, which will generate some demand of its own and, um, and add to um, you know, the, the requests for Australian nut and, uh, and nut that's grown all around the world. And thank you for those around the world who do comment on my videos. I would appreciate it if you would make your comments in English. It just means that not only can I understand it, but other viewers of the channel can understand it and respond to your comment as well because we have so many experienced people who watch this channel now something I'm surprised and grateful for and um, I would love them to have the benefit of your wisdom what you can do is go to Google Translate write the comment in your own language and then post it on the thread in English and uh, obviously do the same with the answers that you get what else is ahead? Um, well, the, the rain is going to hopefully add to the crop. It makes mowing a little bit difficult. And uh, right now I'm going to show you what uh, one of my subscribers does when he wants to mow large areas of land.
alas for the rest of us it's uh, mowing and slashing and um, that's what I'm going to be doing as soon as it's dry um, this is the kind of time of year where it's good to get your uh, grounds in a nice mown state like the farm you see here if you can keep the grass at a low level then each time you mow you're not making great big long grass clippings and those long grass clippings can gunk up a harvester so mowing just before you harvest isn't the answer because that doesn't fool a harvester there'll be great big long grass gunking it up and the nuts will fall into that long grass and possibly not be picked up at all so it's time to do grooming coincidentally it's also time to to rain and you know in the northern rivers particularly up in Rosebank we get about 200 millimeters of rain per month all the way through till about April and um, harvest season really should be starting um, in March sometimes in late February for the really early dropping varieties which I don't have but um, yeah there's a clash then where you know it's all hands on deck and on the days when you can mow you do um, if you mow in really wet grass you put a lot of load on your machine because grass plus water is a lot heavier than just grass alone and uh, looking after your machinery is a big concern once it's dry enough though it's really a matter of you know how steep is your land on flat land like this no problem go ahead and mow on steep land well you don't want to have a mudslide because you can't really control your vehicle very well in a mudslide and accidents can happen so that is um, if you like a brief look forward to 2024 we think the macadamia industry is going to set itself to rights a little bit uh, and that the macadamia processes are going to offer a price with a deliberate attempt to attract farmers to supplying them because the coffers are fairly empty um, you know it, whether that's notional or fixed pricing is going to be a very interesting point uh, because if the processes find themselves flooded with nuts um, you don't want them obviously cutting the price on installment payments that uh, they owe you sometimes out from a year after they take possession of your crop so um, as we get closer to that season uh, watch my videos subscribe if you wish and um, you'll get the latest on what I'm hearing in the industry about what is going to be offered to farmers and and in particular the terms and conditions on which those offers are based but yeah look lovely time lovely green land not really a picture of El Nino is it um, but it's a hopefully a decent time for you no matter what it is you're doing. I'll catch you again soon guys. Thanks for watching.